Thank you all for coming. Uh, let's get right into it. So, we're all familiar with this depiction of human evolution. We slowly rise from our hunched over ape-like ancestors to eventually become the modern, upright humans of today. But I'm here to tell you that this depiction is wrong. Not because it's too simple or doesn't take into account branches in evolution or any reason like that, but because humans did not evolve to walk upright. Let me explain. Let's look at some classic bipeds of the animal kingdom. The mighty Tyrannosaurus, the mighty ostrich, the mighty kangaroo. All of these animals retain a horizontal spinal column supported at the midpoint by two powerful legs ending in large flat feet. It's a dynamic body type. They're balanced, they're stable, they can move quickly. Contrast that with the human body, which is just a vertical torso on top of vertical legs ending in tiny useless feet. In terms of overall body type, a human resembles nothing so much as one single cylinder. <laughs> because we did not evolve to walk upright, but to roll. <laughs> I've prepared some highly advanced physics simulations so we can see that the human form is uniquely suited for rolling downhill with walking being a, a later development just for getting uphills. We're much better at this than our more simian ancestors. Uh, and other animals are entirely incapable of this behavior. And there are tremendous advantages of rolling over walking. It consumes almost no energy. One can gather speed virtually limitlessly. And it naturally leads one to sources of fresh water. Now, once you start looking for evidence to support this hypothesis, you find it everywhere. For instance, if we're meant to walk upright, why is it so difficult to teach children to walk? They know how to roll and how to crawl immediately. In fact, we don't like walking. You know who likes going for walks? Dogs. Quadrupeds that are stable on their feet. What do children like doing? Spinning. Moreover, uh, humans naturally move in circles. This is true. If you blindfold a human and tell them to move in a straight line, They'll move in increasingly tight circles, mimicking our natural way of moving through the world. And this explains why uh, early human settlements were on hilltops, so that in case of danger, <laughs> you could immediately escape. There are many studies that have shown that walking downhill is unhealthy. It's bad for your joints and for your muscles. But I have not found a single study indicating negative health, out health outcomes from rolling downhill. <laughs> And of course, as we all know, walk comes from the Germanic Veilcon, meaning to roll. So, how specifically did this evolve? We can see that over time, human evolution is really the process of becoming more cylindrical. Uh, not only have we gotten this straight cylindrical posture, we've gotten narrow shoulders and a large round head, and we've become hairless in all the parts of the body that are exposed during rolling. So this transition would have started when our tree-dwelling ancestors moved into the Great Rift Valley of Eastern Africa, or the Old of Gorge. Look at how perfect this landscape is for rolling down. <laughs> but you may well ask yourself, well, how did this process start? How did we initially start rolling in order to evolve to roll more effectively? I think there were actually two different rotational postures. Early hominids would have used the somersault position, which we now call the fetal position, because it's the one we adopt as infants in a classic case of ontogeny recapitulating phylogeny. <laughs> and then later humans would have developed the horizontal posture, as we can see here with this example of Pharaoh Interestingly enough, this somersault position is the only one found in Neanderthal burial sites. So it could be that this less efficient method of rolling explains why the Neanderthals were outcompeted by humans who could roll more quickly to acquire resources. But then this horizontal rolling pattern would have remained until humans were carrying too many sharp or hard objects, so really up until the beginning of human civilization. And if we look back at Pharaoh Merneptah uh, and some of his contemporaries, these people are clearly just learning how to walk on two feet. <laughs> so there are tremendous implications to this research. Obviously, we should stop teaching people that walking is healthy and convince them to roll as much as possible. Uh, it has implications on urban planning. I recommend a shoots and ladders model of future city development. <laughs> and on body image, as we deal with an obesity crisis, we should remind people that if you think your body is just becoming more and more cylindrical, well, that's the ideal human body type. <laughs> that, that area of abdominal fat referred to as the spare tire exists because it is a tire. <laughs> and you're really just one step closer to the next stage of human evolution. <laughs> A any questions? <laughs> <laughs>